Okay, so here we are with Operation Wolf. Uh, again, this game has no free play mode. So, uh, in order to coin it up, I have to open up the coin door here and play with the buttons. And uh, you can see here, let me zoom in a little bit. Uh, I'll try to coin it up. And if I do it, hold it for too long, I'll get this coin error. And then the game resets, which is a pain. So, I have in here. Sorry for the music. This is the uh, the latest version of the coin up. Uh, just this is the prototype that has the uh, the dip switch on it, and it allows me to set the pulse width of the signal that's getting sent to the uh, to the coin input of the of the PCB, which is right there. So basically, it's just piggyback. Uh, you can see here I just have the power and ground running to the device, as well as the button input. That's the big red star button in the front and the coin input. Coin, coin input actually passes through this device before it gets sent to the PCB and that allows it to temporarily disable it while you're pushing the big red button here. So if we wanted to coin it up, we can just press this button here. Again, if you tap it a few times, nothing's going to happen. But if you hold it for uh, longer than a second, then it'll temporarily disable this button and it'll start sending pulses to uh, the two coin switch. So let's hold it for a second here. There you go. And you just press it again and play. And you're off to the races. Yeah, so this picture shows the pinout for the device. You can see that the power and ground are at opposite ends of the terminal block. Uh, there's a button input and the signal comes from the button of your choosing. Typically it'll be like a first player button. Uh, but in the case of a game like Operation Wolf, uh, I, I use the uh, the red star button in front of the game. Uh, the button out is the signal gets sent back to your PCB uh, that originally was hooked up to, to the button. Uh, and then the coin out is the uh, signal that gets sent to the coin input uh, in the PCB. And I'll show you uh, down below how it's connected. So if we take a look at how to install this guy, uh, and this is what I would call a spliced installation. <clears throat> Probably the easiest way to hook it up. If you just want to get it done quickly, uh, you can cut the uh, the coin, the wire that goes to the coin switch, hook it up into the the proper position in the terminal block. Um, cut the wire that goes to the button of your choosing, uh, and take the end that comes from the button and hook it up to the button input. And then take the other wire that goes back to your PCB and hook it up to the button output. Now what this picture doesn't show is that there's going to be a hole here uh, so that you can mount this device somewhere inside your cab. You want to screw it onto a sidewall or, or something like that just to make it more neat. Um, and if I show you this picture here. So this picture shows how you would hook up the device if it was not close to the harness or if it's up against the sidewall, something like that. Um, basically you just grab an extra piece of wire and splice it into the, uh, the coin switch wire here. And uh, you still have to cut the line that goes to the button um, and round it as shown. But you know, if it's not long enough, you can always uh, extend those through wire nuts or a butt connector or something like that. And each one of these, um, I would recommend you do the same thing: use a wire nut or a butt connector or something. Uh, one thing to note is you will have to use separate power and ground wires uh, to the device. And uh, the reason for that is the the wires that go to your PCB are are probably going to be rather large due to the load that your PCB is running. Um, and, and they, they simply won't fit into the small um, terminal block that I have on the device. So just you know, go ahead and tap into those and, and bring separate smaller gauge wires to the device and you should be fine. So I think that's about it. Um, I'm pretty psyched about this uh, product and I hope you guys are too. I mean, basically it gives any game, any arcade game, uh, free play um, ability without having to deal with uh, ROM hacks or, or any other modifications. It's, it's pretty plug and play. So hopefully you'll find it useful and uh, thank you for your time.